Father, we, we have learned a lot. Some of the things that you are hearing is very revolutionary. Very revolutionary. Uh, this kind of truth cannot be told our parents. They will be lost. It is the truth in the scriptures, but they never discover. And uh, if we will ever have to experience greatness, if they will ever, you know, there's so much in the word of God for us. And you might even live in this life as if you've never, in fact, let me say this. You might live in this life without having no understanding of the truth that is in the scripture it being hidden from you uh, many a times when some new people come to where I preach they ask me whether they have been reading the bible or they still believe the same thing we believe one of them asked me in 2017 May began a class before even he came here. After a certain class for one month, then he said, Pastor, I've been going to church for 20 years because I am about 20 years. But what we are teaching, I never had in our church. I never had it in our church. In fact, he said, the day that <laughs> you begin a church, I will be your member. Truth is what he came here. And they sat for one month and listened. That was 20, 2017 May. That's when I was beginning someone to understand. You might go to churches and, uh, and people just, you might never even know in truth. All your life and you die. Not experience God. In fact, some even go directly and they'll be going to church. All their life. go to churches where people cry, Lord, forgive us, you know. Our life doesn't look like your word. The way we are living. Mungu to I always tell such people, God will not help you. Somebody was telling me yesterday, Mungu to God will only help you when you take his word and practice the way he said. Otherwise, there's no help for you. This is very radical statement. There are some people who are dying with their sickness right in the presence of God because they never speak faith. They never say, by stripes I am. They die just die. I've, I've watched several die. I've ministered to them. They will never confess healing. And what an idea. God is not waiting, waiting for that statement. Waiting for you to say by his right time. When you don't do what the Bible says, when you don't speak what it says, you will not have it. You will not experience it. And many of us go to church. Like when Benaiza reads some of these scriptures, how do you feel? As he is, so am I in this world. And then we are praying God. I want to look like you all the days of my praise and worship us. Yeah. I mean, we need to sit down and scrutinize some of these songs, criticize, look at how it is. So 
that you don't simply sing before somebody is, is singing. Some of those songs are old fashioned. Songs that has something called self pity in it. Somebody is If you want to be like him, the word has already provided what you should do. So what you need to do is to do what the Bible says. Not not doing. So my English is the King James one, so please not to I'm hoping you understand. Not not doing what God says. And then expecting him to to do something. You are on this route. God, I want to go to Nairobi and you are busy moving. Busy moving. You find yourself in Moyale and you continue. I'm going to Nairobi. So many believers are like that. Not doing what the Bible says, but expecting biblical results. That's why our mind has to be so sound. Especially the place that you need to recreate a great and better future for yourself is when indeed you are in this stage. If there is a place you need to be so sound in your mind is at this level. If you get confused at this stage, there is a lot of darkness in the future. Your future should be as clear as what? <laughs> when you look ahead, I am doing a book, Youth with Impact. I will be doing books about all great youths in the Bible. I will speak up. I will write about uh, Joseph. I will write about Daniel. Writing about it's different book each of them. About David. I will speak about Mary. <laughs> How many books will that be? talk about Esther. I talk about because if you study all these people's life, all of them, God caught them when they were teenagers or even less. And he loaded them with a lot of wisdom. All of them. Mary was so young. David was so young. Seven, David, David was 17 years old when he hit and killed Goliath. Can a small guy like that bring solution to the whole nation? Hmm. But that was only anointing. God has to train him for the next 13 years in the wilderness. Daniel is another man. When he was very young, he chose to please God. That's very powerful. Hmm. Joseph is the one we're studying currently. All these are spiritual people. All this. All of them caught something. And they chose to live. You know, at this stage of yours, at this stage of your life, if you choose to give attention to God, even for the next three years, something wonderful will come out of you for your generation. I'm saying something. But all you need is somebody to guide you. When I look at youths, they come running. Pastor, I have this problem. I, no. They're looking for painkiller. You know what painkiller is? You want to deal with that immediate problem. And when it is over, you have disappeared. Then you come to look for painkiller. You don't want to sit and straighten your life. You know, some of our lives are twisted. What I mean by twisted is uh, you've not been given the right information from the beginning. And you've been living the life that is like this. One of the reasons why we need to desire hunger and thirst for God is not so that our problems end. Our problem is coming from somewhere. Our problem is coming from how we've been programmed in the past. We need to reprogram your life. 
so that we begin producing the best result. So that you're going to make sound decisions. Decisions that you will not regret about it all the days of your life. Sound. If somebody looks at you, they just desire to be around you. They want to decide the way you decide. <laughs> they want to everything about you. Uh -huh. If our faith or believing in Christ requires and says what we believe should determine how we behave. <laughs> if our what we are getting, the truth of the word of God is not coming down to a place where it affects everything about our, our behaviors. It is not helping us in any way. And for it to come to a place where it determines how you should behave, you must surrender to God. You know surrendering to God? You tell him I'm here. Make me whatever you want me to be. Let me make this statement. If there is a place that God or you need God's attention and God needs your attention, although God needs your attention also, but you need his attention at this stage. If he puts everything right, and when you talk about putting everything right is you reach a place where you are reasoning, you are thinking, everything about your mind. You remember yesterday what pastor said? Is it yesterday or the day before? Somebody said your spirit is perfect. What is being now worked on right now is your soul. Information has to be brought in your mind. Your, your soul is getting saved every day. The more new knowledge you get into your mind, that leads you in a sound direction. And that getting knowledge should be daily. In fact, all the days of your life. I was listening to Selman about 2023. He said, Choose to get superior knowledge. You hear superior knowledge? Superior? I was wondering. Just go for superior knowledge so that you, you operate. Huh? Is it so that you operate in high places? You, you rise above others. When I was becoming a preacher, I was Pastor Rogers. Maybe this Pastor Rogers, some of you don't know, you will see him one of these. He told me, look at preachers. They are village champions. No village champions. Those ones who are only known in their village. They are those ones who are known worldwide. It is the categories of preachers. <laughs> categories of. And then there, 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 are, there are people who preach only to some few people. There are them that preach to thousands. So he told me, decide who you want to be when I was planning to become a pastor because the call has already arrived he told me watch, he gave me a list of people Miles Mugo Oyedepo, Chris Keith Moore Mike Mudok all these big preachers who are shaking the world and also he gave me the list of the scholars, then he told me how many pastors do you know in your home home area them that even fear to speak in, in radio or they only address this. So he asked me, where would you want to fall? Then he told me, all of them are holding Bible and speaking. But their life is different. Their lives. He told me, choose. And I'm a kukua pastor. If being a pastor is a must, then decide to be the best.
decide to be the <laughs> the best. You can choose to be this village. And then he showed me about all these people. They write books. They speak on radio. They speak on TV. They speak on... <laughs> then he showed me these other ones. They don't even know how to address some congregation. They don't know. Superior. Even as we go into the year 2023. Some of you are wondering why Ben Isaac is coming four times a year. And you look at his reasoning, ways of reasoning is far back. Even when the preachers of this county, this, this town, come and sit here, they will see himself like, themselves like a nursery student before this man. The guy's understanding is... When you invest in such high level of thinking, that is how you rise. That's why somebody must choose who to hear. What is coming into you every day matters. Somebody is trying to fashion the way you think. You must choose. What you hear every day determines who you become tomorrow. And then the other question is who is speaking to you every day. If that person has never gone anywhere, you will not go. Even if they are leaders, even if they are pastors, even if they are who, I don't know. Some of us are, are easily influenced by some people. You know some people? Who is that some people that, who when they tell you this, you do immediately what they tell you? Some of us are easily, that's why they talk about peer pressure. Your friend affects you or influences you more than even some people who think soundly. So as, as we're looking at uh, the life of Joseph, I just look at Joseph. Joseph decided from the beginning that my life will glorify God from the beginning. I will never do anything that is evil before. You know, there's some... <laughs> I look at Daniel. He made the same, the same thing. He said... I will not defile myself with this food they are providing for me. If what I eat physically, you know, eating physically, is what will displease God, I will never defile my. Wow. Look at all these people in the Bible. <laughs> they decided one day. There's a day they sat down and they said, beginning today. You know, it doesn't matter how many years you go to church. If you have never sat down and said that statement, I have listened to big preachers. Ben, ben Isaac was telling me the other day. Since the day I only taught in a school, he's an English teacher. He says, the day I decided to come into this gospel, I was putting those chocks down. You know those chocks? After two months of practicing what he did in university. In fact, he didn't even go to university. I think he went to college somewhere. He put it down and he said, I will go everywhere you send me on planet Earth. And in the power of the Holy Spirit, and in the beauty of holiness, I will work for you. I'm talking about Ben Isaac. That is 18, 19 years ago. In the power of the Holy Ghost. Are we feeling it? That power? <laughs> in the beauty of? In other words, there's nowhere I will go and corrupt myself with anything. God looks for such people. There are so many preachers who have gone to Bible college who cannot be recognized. 99% of them 
of going to Bible college, even after preaching for 60, 20, 30 years, they are not doing anything. Somebody has to stand up and stand out and say, you know, when you make that kind of statement, you have said not to compromise. Not to. Irrespective of what comes your way, the Bible says Jesus was anointed above all his colleagues because he hated evil. God will only use people who are conscious of the way they live. Conscious of the way they are. They live conscious. Conscious. Because this, all this, when you look, I know I'm talking about Joseph. Joseph, I'm, I'm finding it hard to enter chapter 39 because I'm going to chapter 39. Mm. This is a man who decided. Let us read chapter 39, verse 1. When you decide, God will honor what you say. I've talked about all that that he went to his brother's hands. Maybe if you want to read, you can find it on a YouTube. Verse 39 says, chapter 39, verse 1, and Joseph was brought down to Egypt. And Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down thither. Now look at verse 39. Verse 2, sorry. And the Lord was with Joseph. And he was a prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. They abused him. They called him every name they ever wanted to call him. They threw him in that dry well right there. They taught all evil about him. Hmm? You know what anointing does? So yesterday you were here. You, you, uh, <laughs> you were here. You were being taught about anointing. You just find the fight that you did call for. <laughs> With anointing is on you. <laughs> when you enter a place and you are preaching and nobody is against you. You have to ask yourself a question. You might look like the environment. <laughs> when you are different, this guy, they abused him. They did all manner of things to him. They did all this. Then they sold him to Ishmaelites. These people are, I, imagine if you are the one being sold like a god. A big, bigger bay. So you want Angalia? What do they look at? Gonna a lot of what? You have a lot of flesh. I don't know what they look at. They say look at, and then they say, bring this amount of money. Our people want to go and end up with Uza. And the Bible says he is very prosperous. Does God see the way we see? What is God specifically looking at? As far as, even if you are the one who should comment about Joseph, what will you tell us about him? If you are the one. What do you think? What do you say? There is something about someone's character. I'm saying character. 
this man decided you're going to see by the end of this chapter when this wife of Pharaoh uh, Potiphar is trying to drag him into sin and he asks a very serious question very serious question can I do such a wicked thing before God about how it's being sold from this place to the other place. It is the decision he made. We read chapter 37 at length. I exposed the book chapter 37 like for more than five Sundays. And I showed you how he decided never to engage in evil. Even when his, his, his brothers were doing, he is out of it. And all of his brothers were immoral. 38 can inform you. That's why I didn't touch. If you don't study about people immoral, <laughs> we choose what we want. We don't study Judah 37. 38 is. I don't want to hear. Reuben immoral. All his brothers immoral. He decided never to be. The day you choose to remain pure. The attention of heaven is on you. Because one of the things that easily bring down your rank in the spiritual realm, or something that will bring you down before God, is this kind of sin. The man decided, me, myself, and I, I, I don't know, that's selfishness. I don't know why I'm using that word. There's no day I will do anything considered evil before. You know, somebody must decide that kind of decision. It doesn't matter whether they are calling you the dreamer, you kill him. Hmm? A proud guy is you who, what, take. It's not about what people say. It is the state of your character. That matters to God. When by your living you choose to please God. And one thing about Joseph, Joseph is not an ignorant man. This guy is so informed. He's not so informed. I mean so informed. You know some of us suffer in in ignorance. And we are saying we are holy. <laughs> we are this. We are that. Ah. That is why even concerning how he lives his life, he is fully aware. One thing, as we grow together in this youth, you know, I need to reach a place where we are going to have our God as youths. Oh God, and the things we're going to discuss. Amen. The Kanisa Nzima to Mekula, as a Tunaka youth, Mimi Moja Natosha. Although we are going to talk things that are serious, if you will ever be a great person tomorrow, you need to be guided. Every decision you make every day counts. I'm saying every decision you make every day. Some people that I lead, I tell them never make any decision unless I know. Any, I'm saying any, whether it is career wise, whether it is getting into relationship. And it's not every youth who will tell you that. It's only the bright one that will come and tell you, tell, talk to me now. <laughs> Others have a lot to, to hide. They'll only come to you when they are, when they are messed up. You know, I found myself, and then I get there. Why do people hide what will hide you from?
we are talking about youth with impact. If your generation will smile at you tomorrow and they will look for you, somebody must organize your life today. <laughs> I'm saying somebody must organize your life today. I was organized before I stood before you. I didn't just come from nowhere. I sat under four great men of God when I was in college, after I came out of college. They, they told me what to do. Everything I do, I do because I was instructed. I'm not going to do something and then I say, I wish I Never make any decision that somebody who is in authority above you, be it your spiritual father or your biological parents. Although at some point I realized that biological parents reach a place where they are not even grown yet. And their decision should not matter, especially about life. I'm talking about biological parents. If they have not grown spiritually like they have grown there. Like for example, when I was coming to ministry, my parents were against me. They told me, we will curse you. I was comparing the two curses between God and me. So, so which one is higher? <laughs> now my mom comes every day here and sits there. She told me I will curse you. Now she's here. <laughs> the first day I, we are speaking English, but she will still come. Some of you don't know my mom. The one that sits behind there. And my wife is interpreting for Together with my dad, they say we'll curse you. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, I'm higher in authority now. Spiritual. Yeah, they are my parents. But I've grown spiritual. When it, 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 when it depends, when, when it comes to the spiritual issues over the count of months of it, I can speak to their life. They have their place as my parents. They have to speak to me authority. But right now, no decision is made in that house until they consult you. I want to do this. What do you think? I'm saying that. In fact, spiritual authorities are higher. If you know that your parents have never grown spiritually, they should not advise you in the things of God. This one looks like I'm telling you be rebellious. They are also under the authority of God's word. They're not above God's word. If what they tell you, like one of the things they are telling me, you must be part of this tribe. Enter there and do. I told them I'm not a son of this tribe. I'm a child of God. Son of this tribe. I am not. I don't listen to the tribal leader more than God. I refuse to be part of this setup. You know when you kikuja your kuishi apa, na uliza kama ni put kwa village gani ingia. Not me. I am too international to be reduced to these local things here. And then you sit with the Muslims and all these other people and a leader who is the tribe leader is leading all of you who is not born again telling you what to do not me I am special <laughs> I miss I do what the Bible says and I will rise before their very eyes you can't take instruction from God and remain small in your life you can't. If you want to be seen, you know, seen. And you know, look at Selma. And many of us listen to Selma. That man decided from the beginning that I will please God with my life. It doesn't matter where you begin. When you begin, the future will be so different. 
So this man called Joseph, look at Joseph. Joseph is called prosperous. Even when the first verse is telling us that he was sold from this place to this place. And the Bible says, as far as God is concerned, he is prosperous. When you hate evil, you prosper. God was asking the devil about Job. Have you heard, seen a righteous man like Job? Someone who hates evil. God was even asking Satan. One man of God said, <laughs> the devil, the Satan or the devil sends demons to him. But the day he comes by himself. <laughs> <laughs> when the big man <laughs> he was sending people to demons to people because he knows if your stand is not strong as far as the word of God is concerned he will send demons to you the day he knows that your stand is so strong and you are unshakable <laughs> you cannot be thrown down he comes himself so that he sees whether eh, he came to to job himself Demons are not able. So he tried. So many of his problems came when the devil arrived. He was asked, where are you coming from? Chapter 1 of the book of Job. I went everywhere. And God told him, do you know something by the name, somebody by the name Job? What did he say? Let me just read that verse. I think this is very powerful. I just want to show you people who, the book of Job, chapter 1, these are people who have decided. I mean, they decided. Job chapter 1. That's the kind of life that also Joseph lived. He hated evil. Look at what God talks about this kind of people. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright. Uh, and one that feared God and eschewed evil. Look at the name people who always hate evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and daughters. His substance also was 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, and 500 yoke of oxen, and 500 she donkeys and a very great household so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east upright can you be holy and be rich <laughs> people have believed that you cannot be holy and be rich you have to use some dubious means to get what you want it's not true it's not true I have watched the men of God. The other day we were in odd explosion. Yeah? Look at that kind of beauty. Do you think that man is poor? Is Pastor Lai poor? If he goes anywhere and he preaches and he asks for offering, people flood the place. The man he doesn't wherever he goes. Money coming to him. <laughs> some of our, some of us are beginning preaching. I, I teach pastors. They hardly ask for offering in the church. They fear people. Hey, you see. I was giving them what they teach for the four months, four weeks, sorry, in the church. Go and teach about giving. People are not giving. Hey, I mean, it's foolish. Hey. You fear money. Money fears you. This man has lived. I have studied the life of Pastor Lai. And I, I compare him to this thing. You see. If his son, who is a pastor, can buy a vehicle for his daughter, a birthday gift, is that a small, is that a poor man? In a letter cake, in a letter diary. Nasio Filda. 
Toyota Corolla. You cannot serve God. Hey, let me just keep quiet. Now verse 6 says, Now when a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them, and the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto, unto Satan, Hast thou considered, considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth? Ah. Who is talking? Imagine on the whole face of the earth, nobody like Nobody. A perfect and an upright man, one that fears God and has choose evil. What made him to be unique in the whole area? His decision not to involve in sin. Even today. God is looking for such people. God is looking for even today. Them that have decided. And that's why, you know, for me, coming to church is not anything. Sometimes I watch people's life like, let me look at three months down the line. How is their life? I'm watching, but I'm not saying anything. <laughs> there are people I know. They stay with me and I just look at observe their life for the next three months, four months. I can know what their future looks like. I can dictate it from I can I can just say from now, the next five years, what will it look like? The next ten years. Because there's a way of life. Huh? There's some very radical decisions that some people make. That heaven recognizes. I wonder. The future of Joseph was still like the future of Job. Even when it came to wealth. Is wealth important? Not as important as God. Today, one of the things that people will chase is what? Pesa. They don't care how their character is like. When you are very, when you are very rare in the presence of God, like for example, we had conference this week, Monday to, to Sunday. Seven days. Teaching in the morning, teaching in the evening. Teaching in the morning, and you appear once or twice. I know you have a problem. A character problem. I'm serious. Something else is more important to you than the word of God. Some of how much attention do we give to God? I'm not saying to the preachers, I'm saying to God. Because when the word of God is coming, like for example, this week from Monday to that we have been taught. The teaching is online. If you go back to listen to the past teaching, you might think that you are not in that service. The first day, yeah? <laughs> the first day, meaning you need to give more attention to all the teachings so that it becomes part of you. What I preached here last Sunday, you might not even remember what I said. You might just remember a statement of two. The whole content. I normally listen to a teaching more than seven times before I assume that I know. And every time I listen, sometimes I listen to some teaching that I've listened to one year ago. Today. It comes fresh. Like I've forgotten so many things. I need to listen, 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 and remind myself. But when we don't have that habit of listening to the word of God that much, 
we live very careless life, make terrible decisions. God cannot talk about job like this. In verse 1 we have heard. Now look at what God, the devil is saying. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Do Job fear God for nothing? <laughs> look at what he says in verse 10. Has thou not made a hedge? A hedge is a fence. Yeah. The fence of fire. Has thou not made a hedge about him and about his house? In other words, he is fenced by God. Nothing can touch him. Some of us who are always fearing to having a lot of fear, look at them, look at this man. He's saying, you are protecting him. You have put a fence around Job. I'm talking about Job, yeah? Job, that means it doesn't matter whether there's accident that will happen, the man is safe. No works of the devil. This is the devil talking. And about his house, his compound is protected. And about all that he has on every side. All his possession is protected by who? You can't be perfect. Upright. You hate evil. And you be fearful. Uh, even if things are happening, you see how many, is, is the devil talking, not God. You protected him, I cannot reach, like, reach him. You protected his house, I cannot reach his house. You protected all his possessions. And then he's asking, he's worshipping you because you are doing that. In other words, there are people who the devil can easily access and do whatever he wants with them. Them that are not living upright. If somebody just dies and is a Christian, look at his life. Especially some people are dying young. And they tell us God loves them more. No. They live a terrible life. Nobody wants to hear. People will be shocked. I will not bury anybody, but if I have to be taken there, <laughs> you give me a mic. I will disappoint everybody. I will undo all the preachers have preached. Look at this man. The devil says, I cannot touch him. I can't come around his house. I don't even see him. Bishop Solonka was saying, if you remember, in word explosion. They said we are going to go to the big witch in this area to whom all politicians are going to get their power to win elections business people says we will go to that guy and he has to surrender to Jesus we need to look for one in this county huh? yes, we are going to look for a witch that everybody goes to when they arrived there the man asked them why didn't I see you how did you arrive <laughs> because the guy sees in the spirit you are learning about the spirit Anybody who walks to him that has decided he sees. But this one just appeared. These people just appeared to him. This bishop and his team appeared there. And he never saw them. How do you see him? Because they are, they are superior than you. And they finished their business right there. They, have, he, they finished his business right there. People cannot see. Even if you are seated in a vehicle and you are traveling, he cannot see you. <laughs> no accident can see you. No? You are no motorbike moving. We were leaving Saku restaurant at around noon. Was it on Wednesday? Maybe it's even a big big day. He loved it. Mama Fever Likwa Nai. I'm a shikaru from Kona. So we woke up and we looked at our hands. Nothing. If you look at one of our side mirror, it broke in pieces. 
Nitakuwa kama mchanga. And nothing even if you look at my legs her legs so nothing. Ili laptop alichukua kaangalia ili gonga mawe pa. This thing is 1000 105000. We took it. Even if it tries to come out as healthy as you are. He cannot do anything. In fact, I I think I even wondered how that one happened. been protected you have 100% security stronger than the one of the president of Kenya or the most guarded prophet uh, president in, in in Africa they gave us around 10 of them and they put there ndoka maput put in the top put you are rushing You know how that guy is protected? If he meets with you and azaongea na wewe uko kwa room nyingine yako hapo. But people cannot sit. If he sits with people, you sit there, he sits here. And his security is so tight. Our security is tighter than that one. <laughs> and you don't see with your physical that was blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land wow so before anything you must think about putting your character right you must choose to please god 100% is it hard no not hard. I'm saying 100%. That tells you that you have to decide before I do anything. Before I decide, I must have sufficient information about this decision. Especially the mind of God on this. What does the word of God say? I see people make mistakes every day. Every day. Pastor Nico even itafanya calling me every day from everywhere. What will I do? And some of them I tell them come and sit and learn the word of God. Don't even make any decision. <laughs> like for people who some of us want to get into marriage. more than you need that partner you need God <laughs> I've seen people disparate for how to get somebody I want to get the problem is your character and God is not even opening your eyes to see and you're landing on this it's not the one you think of this it's not the one you think of this seek the kingdom first and all these things shall be added unto <laughs> establish yourself in the truth first even when you're thinking about relationship and all these things forget even about anybody anyone who is standing straight upright living as per God's standards hundreds of people are following them hundreds and people are following them themselves their character is wrong is not <laughs> when you put your character right even when it comes to marriage aspect you are going to see the right person and I always say God is more important than that person first of all get stuck in God get built up. Don't even think about looking for one. When the time comes, I remember when I was looking for one. I've written all the visions that you see now that have become a reality. And I was looking for who can accompany me. 
I didn't carry. Anybody cannot be a pastor's wife. Anybody cannot be a pastor's. Or anybody cannot be your wife. Or anybody cannot be your husband. Anybody. There has to be somebody. And you must also have a specific description about the person you are looking for. Depending on the purpose for which God has created you. You wrote down your purpose. Okay. I sat with Pastor Rogers, came here for some few days. Now this ministry I have, what do you have to tell me? They gave me around several books on marriage. Read about it. And they gave me some specific things. So how to teach. Otherwise, this ministry will not be where it is today. A man who is coming and he's not going to work. He's going to do ministry. Are there ladies of that kind today who can say, I can bear the burden until the ministry stands? <laughs> not anybody can say that. And God, I thought of Mama Feva within a second. And I've never seen her for six years. I know she's from our side. I was in Western, Kenya. I called her. It was direct, yes, not even now. Amen. Now the work we began from scratch. And the work is expanding every day. I know of preachers who have married the wrong people. Yeah, God guides us. If you are to choose to live upright, there has to be abundance of the word of God in you to guide all your decisions. Abundance of the word of God. Let the word of God dwell in you richly in all wisdom. In other words, when the word dwells in you richly, every decision you make is wise. You're not going to leave anything to chance. You're going to study about everything. Everything. People go into relationship without bila kusoma hata kitabu moja. You must read several books. How do you know? By just looking around. Why do you know? Ah, ah, achana nayo. Build yourself in God. Forget about all these other things. God will bring whatever you need as a bonus to you. Have this, have that. Joseph was prosperous when they were calling him a slave. What matters is what they decided with God in the, in the private. Uko nyuma wale agree na mungu nini. When I stand before you today and I speak to you, you don't know what you agreed with God before I came to do ministry. 2011. When I realized that now, I struggled with this thing about ministry for a whole year. I even changed my phone. Simi yangu ya samani, safari kwa mzero seven. I even changed that one. <laughs> the current one I bought that day. Nobody had my number. Because I was talking with God. I was deciding what will happen when I come here. And I told him, now I am ready. Ministry does not begin in school of ministry or Bible school. Many people don't have that kind of how do you call it? Convenant with God. There has to be a personal covenant you have to make with God to live a godly life. Even when you come into ministry. This coming year, we are going to raise our standard even in service in this church. Because everybody must make a commitment to God that I will serve you like this. I will guide you on how to do where such commitment is not, people dwell carelessly, live carelessly, never respect God. God will always honor his part of covenant. 
them that have to try their best is us. I will choose to leave us by your word. Otherwise, there is no God in what we do. Each one of you must reach a place and you need to sit down before God and tell him, beginning today, I choose my life to go like this. Anything contrary to this, I reject. Even when my parents were trying to tell me, we'll cast you. We've already talked to God, so what do you do? It doesn't matter who. When I came back here, relatives were like, all of them came. I counted, you might have used. a degree, I said, you a degree in India, 10 years ago. There's a lot of jobs in GOC, you need. Them, no. They don't call me, they call my mother. I tell them, let them call. They don't call. Me. I know what I talk with God. So even your individual lives, you must reach a place you decide. I choose to live for you only. And that means. The standard that you're going to set for yourself has to be higher. God's standards are always kill. when we talk about from glory to glory, it means you have ac you're accepting now to, to live according to his standards. As you increase the standard, the glory increases. As you increase, in other words, every year, you choose to move from where you are to another level. The glory increases. There is no glory without a serious commitment to God. No glory. We'll go from glory to glory. We'll, people talk. But they are maintaining low standard as far as their spiritual life is concerned. They don't have it. Even in the secular world, you look at the school that is performing most. You will not like the principal. The most principal school in Masabi, as I see. Public school. Forget about it. Teachers arrive by seven and should be there until six. <laughs> Everybody has the, the man has put a very strict. Our teachers are crying, people are crying, but they don't want them to perform. I know even in here you're facing a lot of pressure. Is it pressure? Am I pressuring you too much? If we are to produce a standard, you cannot live a mediocre life and expect excellence. For as we go into the next year, standard has to do what? Rise. There has to be some sacrifice before you see more glory and more increase. Amen. I think that is what I can say for today. We are saying Joseph was prosperous. In this chapter, I will speak a lot about some of the areas. Like one of it is, I've already begun talking. One of the areas he decided to be to be good artists where he will please God. He will never do anything outside what God does not expect. Another thing is stewardship. That anything committed to my hand must grow and prosper. Anything. Stewardship. This is even before he thought about getting somebody to marry. He hasn't even thought about it. The guy is still working his salvation with fear and trembling. That's what we say. Works his salvation with fear and he's just looking at how his life can match with the standard of God. Even if people around him are, oh, everybody around him are mediocre. You know mediocre? People living carelessly, aimlessly, of your, of your, everybody around him, but he decided 
that I will not be of your oil like all this. Father, we pray for grace to be unique, distinct, strict when it comes to the issues of the truth that we have learned irrespective of our environment. We choose to live as per what your word says. Not the way we think. Some of us have been brought up by ministers who have never been careful the way they lived. Have never been passionate about the truth of the word. I've never considered. And some of us just lived anyhow. Lord, we choose to live as per your standard. I mean as per your standard. So that this generation can be blessed through us. Your standard is very high. And we have ability to meet it. We are not natural humans. We are supreme, superior beings. We have your nature, your divine nature. And we can easily live as per your word. And Father, we commit ourselves to this truth. So that this talk we are give, making, youth with impact, we become impactful in our generation. Yes. We honor you. In Jesus' name we pray.